Hello. So, I know that some people in my recent poll on my YouTube page asked for a softball video. We finally had some home games. So, I'm going to run through um, what I look for on a day at softball and show you some of the photos that I got at the first double header of the season. So, here we go. All right, first off, I always try to get there early enough for the lineup, so they always kind of uh, create a circle and they run through and then run onto the field and then the national anthem. So I always try to shoot the lineup because they always have different handshakes and stuff and sometimes they jump up and do you know high fives and stuff. So um, they come in handy for graphics when we're trying to promote a game week or something, having a fun photo. Um, so I always shoot that, usually with the Canon, uh, 24 to 70 and usually at 24 and I usually try to get up pretty close to them so I'm out on the field while they're doing that and that's because the 24 the 24 is um, wide enough that if you get up close it's, the actions kind of like right in your face so it's overemphasized a little bit so it looks really really good all right and so for softball I primarily hang out in the dugout the dugout allows me to be at the end right by third base so anytime there's a play from first to second I can see the slide going into second the slide going into third and softball is a small enough field that with the 70 to 200 I can capture first base perfectly fine and and home plate and even still capture the outfield perfectly fine with some cropping so shooting from the dugout being that I work for the school I'm allowed to do that I'm allowed to move around in the dugout as well, so occasionally with the 24 to 70 on the second body, I will get some wide shots of celebrations in the dugout. And this season, I'm starting to something a little different. And it first started with um, baseball, but I'm starting to stand on the bench in the dugout and shoot over the fence where the players are standing because it allows me to get over the fence and above the players and I'm able to shoot a little more in front of the pitcher without having to get out of the dugout and walk around behind home plate. Now, I always try to get behind home plate for softball and baseball, but for softball lately, the pitchers have been facing the dugout, so I'm able to get a nice wide shot of when they kind of spread out and throw the pitch from the dugout. So I've been sticking in the dugout for the first two games. I'll move around as the year goes on, but since it was just the first double header, I stayed in the dugout to kind of make sure I don't miss any celebration shots and just focus on the position plays. A lot of the pitchers will pitch many times throughout the season, so I'll get around and shoot from first base and behind a home plate as the year goes on. All right, so now for specifics of what I'm looking for during the gameplay, I always start with getting a few shots of the pitcher and then I transfer over to the catcher and try to get some photos of the catcher. Um, at least every game I try to get a shot of the catcher catching the ball um, because sometimes they get, I don't know, they get player of the week for that position. So, and sometimes people just forget about the catcher. Um, so I always try to make sure I get photos of the pitcher and the catcher to start with. And then usually every play, I will try to start with like focusing on a player and wait and just hope the play kind of goes that way or I kind of understand where the ball has been going a lot so like if it goes to shortstop a lot I usually start at 70 millimeters with the 70 to 200 and then as I hear the um, maybe the bat hit the ball I'll kind of zoom in a little bit hoping that it's going to shortstop or third whatever it may be and I usually don't close one of my eyes when I'm looking through the viewfinder I'm usually keeping one eye open and then one eye through the viewfinder so I can kind of see the play as it's happening and try to track the ball the best I can and then try to zoom in as tight as possible while I'm taking the photo. That way, hopefully the action is nice and tight at 200 millimeter or 180, whatever it may be, depending on what position I'm trying to zoom into. And then um, for a like pot fly or a ball that's got some air under it, I usually try to look and see where it's going or see what player is calling the ball because they try to call off their teammates. And so 
I will try to hurry up and focus on them and shoot early enough that I get the ball as it's going into their glove. That way, when I turn in the photo, I try to give them the photo where the ball is right before the glove or at least in the frame and not covered up by the glove being closed. That way you can see that they're actually catching the ball or they're throwing the ball. Always try to get the shot of them throwing it back into the field, even if it's after the player is safe on base because having that action of them throwing the ball um, back in is gonna be a good action photo for any position that's out there. And then when it comes to batting, I stay over on third base because on our team, we have a lot of left-handed batters, so they're facing me. Um, so when they turn, they're st their face is still showing. And then it comes in handy for the right-handed batters because even once they swing, they turn towards the camera. So it works very well for the distance that I'm at on the softball field. Baseball is a little different, but for softball, I stick on the third base line um, to try to capture all that batting. Um, and I shoot every single batter because you never know when they're going to hit a home run or get a good um, two or three run RBI, whatever it may be. Um, and then everyone loves a good batting photo. So um, I'm always shooting the batters. I'm basically shooting the whole game, but you know, sometimes you get a little busy trying to shoot dugout stuff that you might not get every batter. But um, that's also another thing to keep in mind is um, looking for good shots in the dugout if they're cheering on their teammate or if they're doing a chant, whatever they're doing in the dugout, if you can get some good team photos um, of multiples of them together um, doing a cheer or whatever, that's always fun to have. And then after the game, typically they'll have a little team huddle. I try to get any team huddles after the game or in between innings when they come together and they talk about what they need to do or substitutions. Anytime the coach goes out to the mound, even though that's usually pulling a pitcher, I like to take that photo as well because sometimes you get some good smiles um, if it's a good um, transfer of pitcher because it's just been a long game and they're going to the reliever. So just keep shooting, always be looking for the good shots and try to be creative. Um, I'm always trying to find new things to shoot every year because after you do a full season of baseball, softball, of any sport, it's a lot of repetition. So trying to find different things and different ways of changing up your photos is gonna be good for your portfolio and just your work in general. And the school or whoever you're shooting for or even for yourself, um, are they're gonna appreciate having a variety of shots and not the same shot of the same athlete for three years. So, you know, try slow shutter stuff like I mentioned in a previous video. Um, change up your, even your f-stop, you know, you don't always have to be shooting at 1.8, f2, f2.8, you know, sometimes go up to 5.6 and have a little more in focus when it comes to group photos and stuff so everyone's sharp in the photo. So um, with that said, I appreciate it. If you would um, leave a comment down below if you have any questions, suggestions, um, and I appreciate it if you would like, subscribe, and I will see you all next time.